Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Authors at Google event. Today we are hearing from Len, Len Ladinov, who will be talking to us about The Drunkard's Walk, How Randomness Rules Our Lives. Len is a physicist whose work has spanned everything from writing children's books to writing books on the, the history of physics to working um, as a, a writer on Star Trek The Next Generation. So we're all very excited to hear, hear what he has to say about randomness and how it influences our daily lives. Um, at the end of the talk, we'll have some time for questions and answers. And we have a mic set up in the front. And we'll also circulate a mic in the back. So just be sure to use the microphone for our, our friends at, at, at YouTube, our, our virtual audience. And without further ado, I'd like to welcome Len. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm Leonard Mladenov, and the book is called The Drunkard's Walk. And it's about the role of randomness in life and how and why we often misunderstand, misinterpret the role and draw improper conclusions from the world around us. I won't go there yet. Some years ago, a man won millions in the Spanish National Lottery with a ticket that ended in the numbers 48. The man did not attribute this winning to luck. He had a theory. And he was very proud of it. His theory is what drove him to pick the numbers 48. What was his theory? <clears throat> I dreamt of the number seven for seven nights in a row, he said. And seven times seven is 48. <laughs> <laughs> well, that works for some of us. And that's the point of the book. We all look at the world around us and take in a lot of data every day. And we filter and we interpret the data based on our intuition and sometimes our multiplication tables and we come up with certain results. And some of us make errors that aren't quite as noticeable as the error that the Spanish man made, but we do make errors, and when we deal with questions that involve uncertainty or randomness, we often misinterpret what happens in the world around us. So now this slide. This is a picture of a drunkard's walk. A drunkard's walk, a lot of you may know, if not all of you, is another name for the random walk which is a mathematical term for basically a random meandering. And that is what's pictured here. And the reason I chose Drunkard's Walk as the title of the book is that I feel that it's a good metaphor for what happens to us in our work, in our personal life, in our everyday lives. We all, of course, have our own directions and our own goals, but we're also in contact on a daily basis with unpredictable and uncontrollable events that have a very great effect on the direction that we take. And what the Drunkard's Walk illustrates is that even if we have no direction, we'll still get somewhere. This is the beginning of the Drunkard's Walk, for instance, and all these turns are made at random, and that's the end. So if you, didn't, if you only saw the beginning and the end here, you might consider that whatever this represents, that this person got from here to here on purpose. But we all can see in this case that the person just got there at random. And that effect, even when we have no particular direction, can still take us from point A to point B, and we don't always realize it. So today I'm going to talk about two things. The, the, I can only touch a little bit of the things that I talk about in the book, and I pick two categories to talk about. One is some of the confusions and illusions of randomness that happen in everyday life that I can illustrate here. And after that, I'm going to talk about a few of the psychological reasons that we make these mistakes and that we misinterpret randomness. The first illusion I like to talk about, I call the illusion of causality. Again, if you look at the drunkard's walk, you think, you might think, if you see someone from the starting point and then you see them at the end point, that they got there for a good reason. And we know in this case that they didn't, that it was purely random. And this sort of thing happens a lot in our everyday life. Randomness has a great effect on certain processes that happen in life. And we often draw improper conclusions about the causality that underlies what's happened. I have th just three examples here that I pick more or less at random. There are so many in the world. But the first one represents sports. Today, um, right now, we have the NBA championships going on. Um, we have World Series games. We have a lot of uh, different sports in which we have championship series, usually seven games. And we tend to believe at the end of the series that the best team won, or at least the best team for that period of time, won the game. And the question then is, is that really true? 
Similarly, uh, this is an article here about the best high schools. We gather data about schools and we think that the data gives us an accurate and fair portrait of the high school or college that it's talking about. And we rarely question ex how accurate a representation that is. And the third example I chose is from uh, Fortune magazine, an article about the greatest money manager of our time. That's quite a claim. And um, they're, <clears throat> they're talking about a fellow named Bill Miller who ran a mutual fund called the Leg Mason Fund, fund who still runs it. And his, he, his claim to fame is that his fund beat the Standard & Poor's Index for 15 years in a row. So let's take that last article um, and let's look at it a little more closely. When his fund started having its long winning streak, many, many in the media started writing about it and quoting odds, the odds of something like that happening if at random. Now I think that's a good thing to do because in science we often, when we're looking at an effect, we do an experiment and we compare what we observe to what we think we might have observed by chance alone. And if that that we observe is much different, we assume that there's a real effect behind it. So I think it makes sense to say Bill Miller was really talented because to do this by chance alone would be really rare. In this case, uh, the quotes ran from 1 in 150,000 after the 13th year to uh, at one article I saw said 1 in 4 billion, um, something that you probably would be surprised if it ever occurred <laughs> with mutual fund managers. Um, it was called the greatest fund feed in the past 40 years and, and many other things. So what I'd like to do is say, let's see what the real chances are of, of accomplishing a feat like that at random. It seems like a very um, great feat and a very unlikely feat on, at its face value because to beat the, the Standard & Poor's 15 times in a row um, at random certainly is something that, that wouldn't happen every day. If you model um, competition with the Standard & Poor's as a, um, with a coin toss with a probability of 50% of success each year, then you can model what the chance of uh, one person having that success would be. And if you do that for, for Bill Miller for 15 years, you end up with a probability of 1 over 2 to the 15th, which is about 1 in 32,000. And that is a very small chance indeed, and you might conclude that if someone accomplishes that, that it couldn't be at random. But now they have to look a little bit deeper. And what is really happening here? What's really happening is that you don't have one person flipping the coin every year for 15 years. You have thousands of them. There's five or 6,000 mutual fund managers today. Um, and there's about 1,000, according to one of these articles, uh, managers of comparable mutual funds. And since the people who write those articles are far more knowledgeable than I about these things, I'll use the, the number 1,000 as a number of comparable mutual fund managers. Now the question we have to ask is, and when we're trying to see if we're surprised by such a feat, not what are, what are the chances that a particular coin flipper or mutual fund manager will accomplish this, but what are the chances that one of those thousand did it? Because whether it's Bill Miller or Barry Diller sitting next to him, whoever it is would get the headlines and would be the person we anoint as a genius. So if we want to know how rare such an event is, we have to take into account all of them. And when we do that, we get a new probability, which is much higher than this. It's about 3%. So, whoops, yep, about 3%. Sorry, I thought I hit it twice. <laughs> um, I don't want to give away the next thing. And you may be, since you're here at Google and you're really smart, you probably uh, have an idea what the next thing is. The next point is that we still haven't really modeled the process correctly because these are the chances that one in a thousand of them starting in 1991 would achieve 15 good years in a row, right? But guess what? If they did in 1990, we would have made just as much hoopla about it. We wouldn't say, oh, he started his streak in 1990. That's really nothing. That's easy. We would have made the same headlines if it was 1990 to 2005 that it makes if it's 1991 to 2006. So how do we really understand this? What we have to do is take a longer period and say, what are the chances if they flip these coins every year over a longer period that there will be some 15-year period where one of them will beat, will beat the standard in pours. I took as my period 40, a 40-year period because the article mentioned 40 years as modern mutual funds. Um, and that might sound like a long period, but it's not really that long considering that the streak was 15 years. It's not even, you can't even fit three streaks back to back in that. So I did a simple calculation of the odds that someone among these thousand mutual fund managers over the period of 40 years would have a streak of 15 
years of beating the Standard Poor's in a row by chance alone. And when you do that, it comes out to being about three out of four. <clears throat> so, if you, another, one way of looking at this, it, this doesn't prove that Bill Miller's streak was random, but it does show that if someone didn't have a streak like this in the last 40 years, then these guys aren't doing much for their money, are they? Because you could just do it at random and, and have a streak like this. So I think what the article should have said, if it was maybe a little bit more um, um, insightful, would have been, expected 15-year run finally occurs, Bill Miller, lucky beneficiary. <laughs> so this is one example of how, if we look at something uh, intuitively, we might be misled Whereas if we look at it using the mathematics of randomness, we find that there's a different reality behind it. Another example that people often talk 